Guys, so I'm gonna take you through the Flutter integration tests uh, for a sample app. So here's our project, it contains a couple of folders. We've got the lib folder here, which contains the application code. So we will need this in order to install the mobile app onto the simulator. And then we're going to run the test against this app. So the test card is uh, sitting under uh, test driver folder. And because we're using a Flutter Gherkin plugin, uh, typically it consists of feature files and step definitions. So if we look at the feature file here, it's a very simple feature. Here's the feature description. And here is the scenario. So all it does, really, it increases the counter. Uh, so you tap on the button and then we expect uh, the counter to be a certain value. Usually uh, the feature file probably contains more than one scenario, but in our case, we've got only one. So step definitions are in steps folder. And this is where the card is actually written uh, to implement our steps. So this is, uh, we're using Dart language here. It's very similar to the TypeScript. Uh, we've got the access to the Flutter driver and we can perform various functions here. For example, like get text or tap on the button in this case. And then every step that we define in our feature file is uh, linked by the regular expression. So you can find it here and there's the second step. Those things in curly braces are parameterized values. So this can be any string and this can be any integer. So in order to run our steps, uh, sorry, our uh, features and scenarios, we need a Gherkin Flutter uh, plugin configuration file. So let's have a look at this Gherkin test file. And there are a number of um, properties here. For example, a pass to the feature files, type of the reporters. You also need to provide uh, step definitions classes. So that's a little bit annoying because there can be quite a few of them. So there's also target app pass here. This is the pass to your uh, application that's under test. And yeah, there's a number of uh, other parameters. If you want to have a closer look at this, there is a uh, documentation available for Flutter Gherkin plugin. So in order to run the test, all you need to do really is right click on the Gherkin test configuration file and select run option. You also need to make sure that your simulator is launched. So let's right click and select run. So it takes a few seconds before the application is loaded from your simulator. And now the, st the test is about to start, so it's going to increment the counter 10 times and then at the end it checks that the counter is 10 as expected. So you can see everything is successful here, one scenario passed, three steps passed, it took about five seconds, so all good. This is the happy pass, so, so let's see what happens if we fail the test. Let's change this to 5 and let's kick off the test again by right clicking and selecting run option. Let's open the simulator.
and it should fail now and it failed so we've got the error message this expect step the last step it failed and it says here that it expected five but found ten so quite a nice error message so there is also an example of a test which is written without uh, Gherkin plugin. Let's have a look. So it's pretty much doing the same thing. First step we're checking that we start at uh, zero, then we tap the counter uh, once, and then we expect that it will be incremented by one. So it's pretty much doing the same thing, but the only thing it just doesn't look as nice as the scenarios in the feature files. So you probably wouldn't share this file with your business analyst or um, possibly a product owner or anyone else who wants to see what your tests are doing. So I quite like having this visibility and being able to uh, read those scenarios in plain English language. And it's also easier to debug your tests. Uh, there's quite a few benefits of having BDD style tests in your project. So there is also README available if you want to find out what you need in order to be able to run the tests. And this repository is shared in GitHub, so you can clone it and play with it yourself.